Want to know why? Ask how. Now, I've been asked to shout this once again. Howard, the Among Us. Some of you have asked for the secret of my diet. I mean, look, physically, I'm a very weird bird. I'm a 99-pound weakling. I'm scrawny as can possibly be. And yet I've managed to main, well, I've managed to maintain a very peculiar body over the course of the seven, nearly 71 years of my existence. You all know and seriously doubt the fact that uh, I've done within the last three months as many as 630 push-ups in a row. This morning I was humiliated. I only did 530. Remember, that's in a row. So I must be doing something right with my diet. Well, diet is a matter of infrastructure of habit. Diet is a matter of self-discipline. Diet is a matter of denying yourself those things which you know you should not have every minute of every day until finally denying them becomes a habit. And once things become a habit, a second self takes over. Not the conscious self, the self below the floorboards of the self, the invisible self, the muscular self, the intuitive self, the visceral self. And when that self takes over, something becomes automatic. And diet, if you push it hard and long enough, can become a habit an automatic thing, a mechanism that frees your brain to focus on things other than food. And things other than food can be phenomenally important and phenomenally fruitful. Okay, here's the Bloom Diet. Now remember, I was sick in a bed for 15 years with a really ghastly illness, chronic fatigue syndrome. For five years, I was too weak to speak. I had to try to fashion my schedule to fit what my body was demanding of me in order to get out of bed. And that meant that I sleep in two periods, two tranches, two pods of time. Um, so here's, here's the way the bloom day goes. It's very peculiar, but the diet is a vital part of it. I get up at eight o'clock in the morning. I head for the bathroom wearing headphones and um, wearing my Kindle so that my Kindle can read stuff to me out loud. As soon as I get out of the bathroom, I get down on the floor before my energy can go to anything else. I get down on the floor and do my push-ups. Because I do them so early in the morning in such a ritualized manner, I have not been able to figure out how to videotape them for you. I need to be single-mindedly focused on just the push-ups. And you'd be astonished if you do an exercise like the push-ups the very first thing in the day before you have a chance to focus on anything else, the amount of energy you have available is amazing. And that's the secret behind all these push-ups. Remember, I, when I was 19 years old, the most I could ever do was 92 push-ups. When I started doing push-ups again five and a half years ago, because I didn't want to be embarrassed in front of my girlfriend with my body, um, I thought that if I reached 92 again, it would be a big deal. Well, Eventually, I passed 300, and one of my Facebook friends, who was a trainer, said, you're about to break 400. I knew that was impossible, absolutely impossible. And here I am embarrassed by the fact that I've done 530 push-ups today instead of 630. Okay, so it's all a matter of infrastructure of habit. It's all a matter of discipline. I sit down. After I take a bath and shave, which I do while listening to books, the entire magazine articles actually, the entire time on my Kindle, I come out here to the bedroom again from the bathroom. I prepare all of the stuff that has to be done during the day for my assistant. She comes in, I have a meeting with her, and then I eat breakfast. This is where breakfast fits into the schedule. So by I throw her out of here at 10.15 uh, so I can start breakfast right away. And here's breakfast. Are you ready? It's an avocado, a can of tuna fish, a mango, and a quarter of a handful of raisins. Just to make it possible to eat that damn tuna fish, it is not easy to eat an entire can of tuna fish, even with the flavorings of avocado and a mango. I do not eat again until three in the morning. Why? You know that embarrassment that comes at lunchtime that you're never allowed to confess to a single soul? You go to lunch with friends. At the beginning of the conversation, you're all jazzed up. You're having, uh, your mind is really moving at top speed. And then the food arrives. And the more food you shovel into your mouth, the slower your brain gets. And then by the end of lunch, it's as if you are walking through concrete. Um, your brain isn't functioning anymore. 
you go back to your office, you go back to your home, you're in a state of misery because your brain isn't there. And it takes you an hour to two hours to recover. Why? Because your body has about four times as much blood shunting stuff, veins, arteries, and capillaries as it needs. And it has that because you only have about two quarts of blood inside of you, a very small amount of blood to cover a lot of you. How does your body handle that? Your body handles that by having lots of capillaries that it can shut down in order to shunt blood someplace else. When you eat, your body takes blood from everywhere, shuts down the capillary, as many capillaries outside of your gut as it can find, and shunts the, the blood down to your gut. It opens the capillary system in the gut to focus your body's, well, to focus your body's energies on harvesting the food that you've just tucked into your stomach. The result is one of the things that gets deprived, one of the organs that gets deprived of blood and oxygen is your brain. It slows you down. So if you don't like being slowed down, and if lunch does get you depressed and loggy, don't eat lunch. Go to, go to lunch with your friends. I go to dinner with my friends frequently. It's just I've learned not to eat a thing. Um, all I do is nurse a glass of water, maybe even club soda, if I'm, if I'm going to really treat myself. And believe it or not, you'd think your friends would think you are crazy, but they don't. They get used to it really fast. And who is the one with the nimblest tongue at the table? Is it your friends who are stuffing food down their gullets and having their blood redirected from their brain down to their tummies, their paunches? No, it's you. You have a ball. You have a great time. I sleep at 11 o'clock in the morning when I finish eating. Food makes you loggy. Take advantage of it. The, the, your body is saying sleep after you eat food. Okay, so arrange things so that you can sleep after you eat food. The Italians do this. They call it a siesta. The Spanish do it. They call it a siesta too. I may have the Italian word wrong. Italian is not my forte. At any rate, the point is adapt yourself to the biology, the bio landscape of your body, the bio timescape of your body. I get up again at three. I take a zillion pills for my chronic fatigue syndrome. I go out and take a long walk, um, an hour-long walk in Prospect Park, the most gorgeous park in the world, near my home in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Why? I'm listening to books on my Kindle. That's reading time. And I'm taking pictures because I've had my pictures displayed at Art Basel in Florida, which is the most competitive art festival in North America. I never thought my pictures would be displayed there, but I've always taken them, as you probably take yours, with the aim of taking gallery quality photos. Okay, then I work. I go to the tea lounge, I work. They throw me out at midnight. I take another one hour walk through the park under the stars and it's the most magical thing in the world to step into a meadow and see the sky opening to you and see what the clouds are doing that night and what the moon is doing and what the stars are doing. It's amazing and it's another hour with your Kindle, another hour to have your Kindle reading a book to you and you can take notes as long as you can find a lamppost, or if you've got an illuminated Kindle, hey, you can take notes anywhere. Why is all this relevant to my dad? I come home, I open the laptop, I do a little bit more of work from about 1.15 until about 2 in the morning, and I try to stop so I can make dinner. What's dinner? Dinner is real simple. It's a half a pound of ground chicken. It's a pound of frozen vegetables. I throw the two into a plastic thing that's microwavable and throw in some spices and put it in for 15 minutes. Um, it is, in addition to that, my, I have a dessert. It is one apple cut up, diced, whatever you want to call it, um, one banana sliced, um, one orange quartered or sliced, um, and then three handfuls of dried fruit, a handful of nuts, a handful of raisins, and two dates and two prunes. <laughs> just for extra flavor. That is it. What's the theory behind this diet? Who knows? It works, but there is a theory behind it. The theory is what your body really needs is protein. Protein energizes your brain. Protein, let's, let's look at the art alternative. You have proteins and carbohydrates, proteins and sugars. Carbohydrates are broken down in your body into sugars, glucose, almost immediately. There's a problem with sugar. When a lot of sugar hits your circulatory system at once, 
your islets of Langerhans and your pancreas go into action. They say, oh my God, we've got too much glucose here. Let's take care of it. And they lunge out into your circulatory system in order to take as many glucose molecules as they can and pack them away in storage form. That storage form is called glycogen. It is a starch, which can be packed away for later use. Um, but the, 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 the cells that are trying to take care of this overdose of sugar have a problem. They tend to overshoot. So you have a spike of sugar that goes up like, well, I'm trying to do it your way, it goes up like this. And then when all those cells from the islets of Langerhans kick in and do their thing, your sugar level doesn't just level out, it goes down like this to below the level you need to feel alert and active and on top of things. So if you eat too many carbohydrates or too many sugars, you're going to go through a jag of sugar up, um, sugar stimulation, and then you're going to go down a cliff of sugar deprivation. If you eat proteins, the proteins are taken apart and turned into glucose. They're turned into sugars far more slowly. And instead of having a spike and then a drop, you have this. You have stability. You have glucose stability. You can think. You can be bright. You can be intelligent. You can be witty. So focus on the proteins. That's why there's an entire can of tuna fish in the breakfast. That's why there's half a pound of meat in the dinner. And then what do you need? On top of that, you need fruits and vegetables. Okay, the avocado is, God knows, somewhere between a fruit and a vegetable. The mango is definitely a fruit. The dried fruit is a little bit too sugary. It's almost like candy. But hey, if it's a treat and it allows you to get away with eating all these other things, fantastic. So you eat a half a, or you eat an entire pound of frozen vegetables at night. You eat three fruits at night, genuine fruits, not dried fruits. What is this telephone doing? Um, I'm going to have to hang up. That's my TV rep. Very important guy. Um, at any rate, um, so that's it. You don't need carbohydrates. You really don't. But you do need one other thing. You need an outlet. If you're going to hold yourself to this discipline, eventually you're longing for candy bars and hamburgers and ketchup. Um, are going to sabotage you. So here's what you do on Saturday night. You let yourself eat anything and everything you want. You pig out. It doesn't matter how many artificial ingredients the thing has. It doesn't matter if it's deep fat fried up the kazoo. If you go to a restaurant around here, you can even get deep fat fried Snickers bars. It doesn't matter. You're only doing it one night a week. It's not going to destroy your nutrition. So that's it. Discipline. Setting times for your meals. Understanding that eating makes you loggy. So positioning your meals in places where they're not going to do you any harm. I sleep immediately after breakfast in the morning. I sleep immediately after dinner at night. Concentrate on proteins, fruits, and vegetables, but most of all, and give yourself an outlet. Give yourself a splurge. One night a week, let yourself binge on absolutely anything you want. Then go back to your discipline again. But it all comes down to an infrastructure of habit. And an infrastructure of habit is something you have, you have to practice denying yourself the things that you used to eat, but you don't want to eat anymore. And it can take you two years or three years of denying yourself those things and only eating the things that are special treats that don't fit into your diet on Saturday night, saving it for Saturday night. But once that infrastructure of habit kicks in, habit is magic. It makes things automatic. It frees your brain. This is Howard the Among Us speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job with proper nutrition and with an infrastructure of habit, with willpower to make or Want to know why? Ask how. And now to demonstrate my incompetence with the off button, I think I have found it.